Okay. So let's get the let me get the slide and share the screen. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Okay. Uh, just a, a little yes or something would be good. Yeah, yes, you can. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this this webinar is uh, Canva for beginners. Um, how to create your own personalized graphics. Um, and I'm going to take you through some design tips, and then Jen, I will uh, share her screen and give us a live tutorial uh, for how to use Canva. So first of all, why use Canva? Well, it's free, uh, it's simple, or at least it's um, simpler than other design tools uh, like Photoshop. Uh, there's no need to download anything, which is really handy. Uh, and it's compatible with most laptops and computers. Um, and ultimately you can create branded posts to share on your social media so that you can engage with and inform your customers um, in, in, a visual, in a visual way, more exciting than just some text. Um, so some examples of what you might make on Canva include uh, how to shop. Um, so this is an example of Strauco's explaining how, how to shop with them. Um, and it's just a more like visually dynamic way to explain how to do it. Um, yeah, a bit more interesting than just a, a paragraph of text. Um, you could also make a design to display your testimonials and the reviews that, that customers have given you. Um, this is one that was made for Cultivate Oxford. Uh, you could also highlight uh, particular producers that supply you with produce, if that's relevant for your hub. Um, you could also highlight a particular product. So this one was for Helston Food Hub. And um, yes, it's highlighting that this gooseberry and elderflower jam is 20% off this week. So again, just more eye-catching than just if you had that in a sentence. Um, what else other things you could do uh, could be order cycle reminders. So letting your customers know that your order cycles are open or closed. Um, you could also explain to your customers what order cycles are uh, because a lot of them might not know. Um, you could also do a nice post about what's in season. Um, and I'm sure there's plenty of other things that you can think of. Um, okay, so I'll take us through some design tips. So the first thing to consider um, when you're making a design is which social media platform you're gonna be using and that would most often be between Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Um, if you're just starting out, uh, I would consider sticking to just one social media, um, consistently posting on there. And then if you find you have the time and the energy, uh, then bringing in the other social medias. Um, so for, for each of the platforms or for the, your particular chosen platform, um, you should consider who your audience is on and what makes them unique and what do they love in particular. And once you've thought about that, you then design and post accordingly. Um, and for each platform, you can use different uh, image sizes. Um, you don't have to, but you probably should, uh, I'll explain in a second. So for Facebook and Twitter, the, the size image you want is 1,200 by 630 megapixels. And this design here is, is what that size would, 
look like. Um, and for Instagram, it's 1080 by 1080 megapixels. And this is uh, the same design as the previous slide, but it's just been altered to fit into that um, aspect ratio. So, so the reason you wouldn't want to post that previous design on Instagram is because it would get cropped on the Instagram grid and you wouldn't see half of it. So, you know, if you had text on one side, then that, that would be cropped out and your audience wouldn't see it. So yeah, for Instagram, best to keep it in this square size. Um, okay, another thing to consider for when you're using text in your designs is um, the font and typography in general. Um, and the most important thing here is that it's readable. So there are a few different things that contribute to making it readable. Uh, it can be the color of the text in contrast to the background. So as an example, black text is very easy to read with a white background, um, but maybe blue text with a red background won't work as well. Um, other thing is the size as well, the size of the text. So um, yeah, a lot of people when they're using social media use it on their phones and that already is a small um, screen size. So you want, yeah, you, you probably don't want to use too small of the text on your designs. Uh, and the final thing is the style. So with fonts, you can achieve different, you can have different styles. Uh, you might have like a playful font or a more serious font. Um, and you should just consider what, um, what it is that you're, what the topic is and, uh, be consistent with, be consistent with the font and whatever it is you're talking about. Um, and yeah, I think it's probably best to use a maximum of about three fonts, um, because uh if you use any more than that your brand identity might become a bit confused so if you stick to three fonts and you're consistent in using those fonts um when your posts come up on social media feeds they will become recognizably your brand uh so you you want to form like a brand identity um and you can do that with fonts uh, another thing to consider is the uh, visual hierarchy in a design. So uh, you can use visuals to convey the importance of the elements in your design. And the most important message should be the focal point. So in this example on the right, uh, the most important piece of information is that the order cycle is closing. Um, and that is in the biggest text. Um, less important information is in the smaller text, but then there is a slightly more important bit of information, um, which is the time that the order cycle is closing, and that's in green, and that just stands out a little bit more um, in comparison to the purple. Uh, and here again, this is another example. So. Um, the same applies with the size of the text, with the most important bit of this is the testimonial and it's in the biggest text, less important is who said it, it's in smaller text. Um, but also in this example, colour is quite important, uh, colour is also contributed to what is the most important thing in this design. So. The black, as I said earlier, the black contrasts greatly with the white, um, so it, it stands out the most in this design, whereas the green um, contrasts less so with the white, um, so it doesn't, it's still, you can still read it, but it doesn't stand out as much. Um, but if, 
the green was in a yellow, for example, it would it wouldn't contrast enough, so you wouldn't be able to read it. Um, so speaking of color, uh, Canva actually has a tool called the color wheel. Um, and you can use this to create a color palette. So if you're a more established hub, you might, this bit might not be that relevant uh, because it's likely you've already got a color palette that you've been using in, I don't know, existing social media posts, in leaflets or posters or on your website. Um, but if you're a new hub or you're looking for like a fresh start, uh, you can use uh, you can use this tool and um, you can find like complementary and contrasting colors. So it's really useful. Uh, this is an example palette. So this is Cultivate Oxford's kind of palette. And uh, the dark green is essentially the trademark color. So that's the color they use the most often or in a design, it's the most used color in one design. Um, and when this color comes up on the social media feed, um, it is recognizably Cultivate Oxford. And uh, they have other base colors as well. So that's the black and the white and the light green. Um, and they also have a highlight color, which is the yellow. So, this can really help um, make the design stand out on the on the social media feed. Uh, so it grabs the audience's attention a bit more than than if it was just a completely uh, soft muted palette. Um, so if you don't have a bright highlight color in your color palette, I would consider adding one and you can use the um, the Canva color wheel to help you find one. Um, the final tip is to use balance in your designs. So balance can be symmetrical. Uh, it can also be asymmetrical and you can achieve balance using negative space as well. So in this example on the right, um, the big text is symmetrically balanced from the top and the bottom and the left and the right. And the smaller text is asymmetrically balanced against the bigger text. And also um, the coffee beans on the bottom left are asymmetrically balanced against the individual pasta pieces on the top right. Um, and it just gives if you know if one of these elements wasn't there or it was in a different place it just I guess it just wouldn't um, be as pleasing on the eye um, and yeah so with the negative space as well it's important to remember to have enough negative space so you don't cram your design with loads of things that that things get lost in there so the negative space allows the most important information um, to stand out. Um, and if you're using images in your designs, uh, there's something really important is not to just take the images from Google images, um, because this can get you into copyright troubles. So it's best to get your photos from um, stock photo banks like Unsplash, uh, also Pixabay, and Canva actually also has its own stock photo bank, um, which is, yeah, it's, there's plenty of images on there. So it's really useful. Um, okay, so I'm going to hand over to Jenai now uh, so she can give us a live demo of Canva and I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Liberty. Um, okay, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. And yeah, can everyone see it? Yeah. <laughs> cool. 
All right. Um, I'm sure um, I don't need to, to show you how to sign up on, on Canva. It's pretty straightforward, especially if you already have social media platforms. Um, it kind of works the same way, but if you want at the end, I can, I can give you a quick look on how to do it. So for today, I decided to do a Facebook and Twitter sized post just because it's a bit of a bigger canvas and so we can do a little bit more. Um, so what you do is you go to create design, a design at the top right. And here you already have like templates of the, like size templates, but the Facebook post one that they offer there is not really the right size. So we like to use this size. And then you, you, you click on continue. And here there's a lot of things happening, um, but it's quite, you, you get used to it quite quickly. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, you can start by choosing a background, um, any color that you want. And to make it easier for you, you can even create your own brand color palette by clicking here and and choosing the colors that you want um so for today i decided to do a, a order cycle reminder because it's quite an easy one um so let's say you decide to choose the color green um so an order cycle reminder is really e like really simple you just you don't want to put too much text you just want to make sure that your customers know that they can they can order now that the order cycle is open or it's closing and they should order before the end of the week or they have until midnight reminders so here you could say um order cycle is open for this week and you can choose here text and you can choose add a heading or add a subheading i think it's better to to use add a heading because it just makes it bigger and you can choose the size later and then here on the top left you have uh the fonts so you can use any of the fonts that you want or that you've chosen for your brand so at the ufn we use oswald and because here we have a pretty flashy background i think any variation of black is probably is probably best for a better um for readability and since it's a it's a cycle you can you can go to elements and you want to choose something that reminds you of a cycle or, you, or something like that so you can either type in in the search bar the the element that you want to add let's say cycle and here at the top, you have photos, graphics, and video. So generally we use either photos or graphics since it's for social media. So let's say graphics, you can choose this one and you can decide the size that you wanna have. So let's say you want it pretty big and you want it centered. And the good thing with Canva is that they have guidelines, as you can see, like the purple line. So it kind of guides you on where to center it. Um, and let's say you want to put a picture in the middle of your vegetables or your veg boxes, or I don't know, you, you packing your orders. What you can do is go back to elements. And up here you have suggestions of frame, line, hour, circle, any type of shapes that you want. And you can click on frame. Sorry, it's very slow. Okay. Um, and you can choose any any shape of, of frames. I think a simple one is, is, is good. So let's say we can use the circle. And you can put it in the middle. You can make it bigger or smaller, or you can put multiple frames um, as you wish. Um, and then if you want to add your own pictures, you go to uploads and you can click on uh, upload a file and 
click open and it should upload here and it will stay here until you delete it. So if in a, in a next post you wanna use the same picture, it will still be here. And then what you can do is you can drag and drop it either as a background or in the frame. And you can also by clicking crop, like kind of move it around or make it bigger if you want. It will center it automatically though. So that's pretty good as well. And another thing, so see here, like the image is on top of the, of the arrows and it doesn't look very nice. So what you can do is right click on the image and click send backwards and the image will be backwards uh, in the back. So you can make it bigger if you want. Um, what's another thing I can show you? Um, yeah, so there's a lot you can do with the free option, but if you get comfortable and, and, and you feel like it's a tool that you want to use, you can, you can also, um, get the pro version, which you have to pay for, but then you can have more images because for example, these ones with the little crown, they'll have like little lines on them, which won't look very good if you, if you post them online. Uh, and you can also do background removers, which is also good if there's an image where you don't really like the background, but you want to keep one element. Um, and for example, if you want to add uh, little details or like, let's say your branding is uh, like um, watercolored vegetables, you can type like a uh, carrot in the elements and then graphics and then find some sort of watercolor carrot and add it in in your design um well like liberty said before like balance is really important so you don't want to crowd it too much because you want to make sure that your customers understand that it is an order cycle reminder and they don't get distracted by loads of little things um around the central message um sorry and so yeah i think i think that's it cool. is there anything you want to add uh liberty um i guess i i quite like the transparency tool i don't know if, yes. if maybe so if you, if you share your screen again can you see it um, it's just, yeah, now I can see it. So I guess I quite like, like for this design, for example, um, I guess with the plain background, it maybe is not like that interesting or it's just, it just looks like there's something missing. So probably what I would do is like add an image as the background, um, I don't know, of vegetables or something. So that yeah that went as big as the background and then and then that like transparency tool on the top right where you can so it's still it's still has the most important bit stands out is that the order cycle is open but it's not just on a plain background um and if it was just like the plain photo then it would be a bit visually busy so i guess with the transparency tool you can just like make it more um more subtle but it's still there um yeah i think I think that's the the main thing that I can remember that I use that you didn't mention. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's Canva is really useful. You can get you know shapes which you can change the color of, and you can add text over that. So um, yeah, there's there's all sorts of things you, you can do. It's really it's like fun. Um, and you can play around it for hours. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. I think that's the main thing because there's so much you can do on Canva and it's like, I mean, this was a very simple like example, but 
I think there's so much you can do and it's it's you'll learn so much by doing it yourself and especially if you already have a branding it makes it even easier because you kind of know what you want it to look like so I think that's the main thing yeah and let me just um share my screen again so I guess it would be really great like we really encourage you to join the thriving food hubs Facebook group because if you do have a go on Canva you can um, share your experience, share things that have worked or haven't worked, share your ideas, um, ask each other for help. Um, me and Jenna are both on there as well so we can help you if you get stuck on it, anything. Um, so it's, it's a great co-learning space. Um, so I think we're almost ready for Q and A's, um, but before we get into that, uh, do you want to tell us about the upcoming webinars, Jenna? Yeah, so we're we're reviving the online events, and um, we would love to know what the hubs are kind of looking for in terms of webinars, whether it's for networking, marketing advice, or just a space to share. Um, we would love to have your feedback or um, for us to, to let us know what you would like to see in, in future webinars. Um, that would be great. Yeah, and we've got, we have got some coming up as well, uh, some other webinars coming up in August and September. So we don't quite have a finalized schedule, but we'll keep everyone updated on when those will be. Um, something else I wanted to add as well. So the community building and marketing team, we're thinking of um, doing, providing some design services. Um, so that would be creating like a package of designs for your hub um, that you would then go and share on social media. Um, but again, nothing is finalized. So um, we'll have more on this soon so uh yeah i'm gonna stop sharing my screen but if anyone has any questions or um comments or feedback um i don't know if there's anything in the chat um okay no questions in the chat yeah yeah um Thank you both very much. That's um, a really lovely walkthrough because, um, you know, when you open it up yourself, it's just kind of like, well, actually, just to have your hand held a little bit for um, the first time is really, really useful. So thank you. Um, what I was going to ask is, um, so you showed us, you know, a poster. Um, so if you wanted to create a logo, just, you know, a, a simple round logo, would that be, you know, could that be extracted from that? You know, you create it on the same sort of um, uh, blank canvas, and then you can extract uh, something, or do you do it differently? Um, yeah, you can. Thanks, thanks, Ian. Um, so, I don't know. Do you want to share your screen again, Jenna? <laughs> um, so, there's before I do that, there's there's two two ways. Like the the pro version allows you to create your own logo, and it has its very own like. Um, like side menu where you click logo and you can create your own logo, but there's there's other ways to do it. Um, let me try and, and show you. Okay. Where is it? Um, can you see? Yep. So, like I said, with the frame thing, here or with a simple um, circle shape like this one, maybe this one is more useful. Um, if you put it at the size that you want, like pretty big, I would say, um, and do your design in the middle of that, of your logo, whatever that is, and you go to share and then you click download and then if you click transparent background, it, it will come out like without the, the background, I think. I think that's how I've, I've done it before. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the way I would do it as well, yeah. 
Great, thank you. That's a, a really good little trick to say if you having to get the pro package. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Augusta. Um, so any other any other questions we can help with? It can be specific or general. I don't have any questions, but um, I do tend to find that the templates are very helpful. Hmm. So if anyone, even if it's just for inspiration and you can then find if the, the paid for ones is you can recreate them. If once you've got your head around it, you can then almost recreate it and just use that for inspiration. So they're always worth having a little nosy around at. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, they have hundreds, if not thousands of templates um, that you can get inspiration from. And that would be, that's on the, on the side. There's like a templates tab. Um, yeah. Thanks, Rebecca. So any other any other questions, feedback, comments? <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm going to stop recording.